Hi Robot Makers, do you want to uh, build a robot with Raspberry Pi Pico and a Bluetooth module? Then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin, come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's see if this uh, sticks with it. Looks like the audio's still okay there. I can see it's peaking a little bit, so I'm just gonna touch it down ever so slightly so we're not peeking into the yellow too much. Right, okay, I promise we will get into this now. So the session goals for today, um, we are going to be adding a Bluetooth module to the Raspberry Pi Pico. Uh, we're going to be looking at serial communication and we're also going to be looking at UART, which is the, the technology we use, the bus type we use to communicate over serial. Uh, we're going to look at some Bluetooth modules. Not all Bluetooth modules are the same. And we're going to set up some serial communication in MicroPython as well. Uh, there'll be a bit of wiring up and some common mistakes. And then we'll get into a demo and we'll have a play with that. Okay, so serial communications. So getting data in and out of the Raspberry Pi Pico, um, we, we use the transmit and receive, uh, just like if you've ever used um, an Arduino, it's very similar to the Arduino, I've got one next to me here, let's keep looking over at it. Um, the Arduino has, um, has its transmit and receive pin on pin zero and pin one, and so does the Raspberry Pi Pico. So they've, uh, they've kept that similar kind of um, pin out, um, but on the Raspberry Pi Pico, you actually have quite a few UART buses. So there's there's two, there's UART 1 and UART 0, but they're actually spread over the device. There's actually many different pairs that you can use, but you can only use one one of the pairs once per, per usage. So if you're using UART 0 on pin 0 and pin 1, you can't then use pins 12 and 13 for another UART. You have to use one of the UART 1 pair of pins. So you can see there on the diagram on screen um, which which pair we can actually use there. Um, so it's great that we've got two sets, that means it's uh, very easy for us to um, to set these things up in code. Um, so Bluetooth, the best way to consider it, it's a bridge. It's a bridge between two serial devices. Um, when I first looked at Bluetooth I thought that this was going to be a really complicated um, technology to get my head around but Bluetooth is actually very very simple it's just like an old-fashioned modem um, that just converts some serial into some radio waves and at the other end it's converts some radio waves back into serial and all we see as developers is just serial so it's very straightforward to do um, and very very easy to code in. Uh, we do have to be mindful of things like um, data corruption. So if we're sending bytes across this bridge, um, they might not make it to the other side. So we need to, we need a, as the programmers to consider that. Uh, but if we're doing things within about 10 meters radius from, you know, from one device to another, we probably don't need to worry about that too much. We can probably just trust that it works okay. There are some error corrections in the protocol already. So once the devices are paired, we can just send and receive data just like any other serial device. So UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter. Um, so that, that's the, the pair of pins, the, the serial communication that we're going to be looking at. Uh, it's also known as serial bus and it enables us to send and receive one byte of data at a time. Um, so we simply just put the data on the bus and it appears magically at the other end. Uh, we don't have to worry about that. And it's just a simple set of pins. So it's just one pin to transmit and one pin to, to, to receive. And the, the data kind of queues up and is sent down that wire one bit at a time. And on the other end, it'll put those bits back together and construct a byte out of that. So we just have to worry about the bytes that are going over there. It's very simple to implement. Um, the pair of pins together are known as a UART and the speed of the transfer of those bits over the wire is called the board. So board, what's board? It's an odd sounding word. It's because it's named after a French um, gentleman, so Jean-Maurice uh, Emile Bordeaux. I assume that's how you pronounce it, not Bordot, as I first thought. So yes, the, the unit of uh, speed is named after him, and he's the inventor of the Bordeaux code for telegraphy. Um, so the baud rate is the rate at which uh, information is transferred in a communications channel. The baud rate is commonly used when discussing electronics that use serial communication. And in a serial port context, 9,600 baud means that the serial port is capable of transferring a maximum of 9,600 bits per second. So bits, not bytes. And one thing to bear in mind is faster is not necessarily better. So nowadays, serial communication ports can... can 
transfer of data very, very fast. However, if you just up the baud rate to be the fast possible, it might uh, introduce noise in there, or it might be more susceptible to noise. So the signal to noise ratio um, is worse when you, when you make the thing faster. So 9600 is fine for, for lightweight communication. You know, we're not sending graphics or HD video across from one robot to another. It's usually um, instructions like move left, move right, very simple commands, or maybe um, a voice command that's simply um, turned into text. So we're not sending large amounts of data. So think small amount of data and you'll be fine with Bluetooth. So Bluetooth modules. So I've got an array of modules on my desk over here. So lots of different ones. They all look very similar. Some have four pins, some have six pins. Uh, I think in fact, all of those have six pins actually, uh, but they come in different varieties where some have four pins, some have six pins. So let me just go back over to here. So if it has six pins, which most of these do, we can we don't have to worry about all of them. We just need to worry about the four middle ones. So the second one down there is VCC, voltage in. Uh, the great thing is it works with three volts. We don't have to squirt five volts into all of these different devices. In fact, um, a lot of them will say on the back that their power is between 3.6 and six volts. 3.3 volts is fine. So if I hold up that one there, you can see it says level 3.3 and the power is 3.6 volts to six volts. So 3.3 works fine. I've not had any issues with that. And then we have the transmit and the receive pin. We have the ground. Uh, some of this enable and state pins, we don't need to worry about that. Um, uh, they also have a little button on the top as well. If I just grab this one here, uh, if I just hold this one up and show you, you might be able to see this just um, a little button there, just next to that top pin. Uh, and that's a, a little pin, that, a little button that enables us to change the state of the Bluetooth module. And we'll get into that in a moment. Okay, so Bluetooth, all modules are not equal. So when Bluetooth first came out, um, it was quite power hungry. Uh, and indeed, a lot of the mobile phones that first came out that had uh, Bluetooth, um, they, I'm just looking at my iPhone now, they had um, Bluetooth on board. And if you had like a GPS uh, module for your car, so you could, um, you know, use your, your phone as a GPS uh, device, then um, you would find that after maybe an hour, your battery goes flat. Um, nowadays, we used to having devices on all the time with, you know, Bluetooth on all the time. And we don't even think about that being a power issue. And that's because most of the devices now are 4 or 4.1 um, Bluetooth standard, which is the BLE low energy version. So if you pick up some of these cheaper uh, Bluetooth devices, I think this is probably one of them here. Uh, this will probably be um, uh, what they call a HC05 or HC06. And these are Bluetooth 2. These are the ones that use a lot of power, um, a lot of power in the, the scheme of things, not a lot of power objectively. Um, but that means that it won't work with a, an iPhone. So Apple have been quite rigorous. They've said uh, only devices that are the low power Bluetooth, uh, so Bluetooth 4, 4.1 onwards, uh, only they will be usable by an iPhone. If you have an Android device, they haven't made that um, that restriction. So you're, you're quite able to go on there and um, um, use an Android device with these types of module, the five and the six. I'm just going to adjust my volume down there. I can just see it slightly peaking. Just bear with me one second while I do that. Uh, I'm sure it sounds OK, but um, I'm a bit picky about this. So let me just adjust that. So when I'm speaking like that, I need it to just peek into the yellow. There we go. Sorry about that. So as you can see on the screen, then we've got um, quite an array of modules. Um, and we've got a little table at the top le uh, top right as well. So those modules that are HC5, HC6 and HC7, um, they're version two. They're the ones that use a lot of power. The ones that are version four, which are the low power ones, is the HC8, HC9, HC, uh, HM10 and HM11. So I do think I've got one or two of those types somewhere on here. I did label one or two of them so I could easily find it. So that's an AT9. They look exactly the same as well. It's only when you, you get it from the manufacturer. So I've just put a big label on that one to remind me that that's, uh, that's one of the good ones <laughs> that works with iOS. Um, it looks exactly the same. Uh, now, some of the modules um, will also come sort of encased within a little plastic case. So if I just show you that, um, that's um, a, a version five or six. And I think this is a version um, eight or nine. 
uh, and it's got this little plastic shield and it says on it DSD Tech. That's the name of the company that I bought quite a few of these from um, and they seem to be quite good quality. So um, I bought quite a few on in bulk. Um, there's not really a, an easy way to see the difference between them, but you can see when you look at um, the, the, the package on there, um, there's different chips. So you can just about see there these uh, different different wordings and different chips. So that, actually, that's a HC01. That's a really, really old one. OK, so just be aware that all Bluetooth modules aren't the same. If you're using an iOS device and you can't detect it, it's probably because it's a version 2 and not a version 4 Bluetooth device. So best get a version HC08 or upwards. OK, so serial communications in MicroPython is a piece of cake. It's a lot easier, I would say, than uh, on the Arduino. So all we need to do is, um, you can see on the screen there, from machine import pin and UART. Uh, and then to set up that, we just need an ID, and that's the bus. Is it zero or is it one? Remember those different pairs of pins and all the different UARTs that we can use. So that's what the ID is. And then RX and TX, um, I'm going to use pin zero and pin one. So my tr transmit is on zero and my receive is on one. If you get them the wrong way around, MicroPython will actually tell you that. It'll say it's a bad pin combination. So if you get that error message, that's what that's to do with. Um, and then you can also see that um, um, you create the UART at the bottom there by just creating a variable of class UART and then you pass in those variables you've just set. And we've got baud rate there. I've just set that to 9,600 uh, because that's a good standard default. Um, now, there are some other hidden options as well. You've got things like um, stop bits, parity, um, was it X, X on, X off? You don't need to worry about any of those. The defaults that are in the class for UART um, work just fine. So wiring it up, uh, again, very straightforward. Um, we can. I, I've used pin zero and pin one there. So on the Raspberry Pi Pico, that's just these ones at the very top um, on this side here pin zero and pin one. And then that's just going into the receive and transmit uh, of the Bluetooth device. And then I'm just using the one of the grounds. Um, so that's pin 40, 38, 38, which is the ground. And then 37, 36, which is the 3.3 volts out. So very simple to wire up. So one of the common mistakes um, with Bluetooth is that you get the, the receive and transmit the wrong way round. So they do need to be crossed over. So a receive goes to a transmit and a transmit goes to receive. So don't do transmit to transmit and receive to receive. That won't work. And it's very simple to switch them around. Um, doesn't need to be an issue there. Bad board rate. So if you have um, two devices and they don't seem to be talking or if they do talk, but you get garbage, that's probably because the board rate is wrong. It's mismatched between the two devices. So they both need to be at the same speed, say 9,600, um, and then that'll work fine. And then the last one is the bus contention. So if you're using pin zero and pin one on the Pico, and that's UART zero, you can't then use some other pair of pins for another UART zero. You have to find a pair that's UART one. Get those things right and you're all good. Uh, Adam says that's a common mistake for I, I to C comms as well. Yes, so on this one particularly, um, I've made that mistake and it's just easy to switch them around and you can you can see that it's fine. So demo time, awesome. So let me just bring up um, Visual Studio and uh, just really conscious that I'm still peeking on that audio there. But you, you promised me that it's fine, don't you? It's, um, if I just tweak this down a little bit there. Um, that hopefully isn't too quiet and you can still hear me fine and I'm not um, distorting right. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to just load up some code here. So if I go over to here, that should be fine. Uh, and I'll move out the way uh, if... Uh, thanks, Adam. Uh, I'll move out the way if uh, if, the, if my head is, is in the way of the code. So I've just created a few files here uh, and I'll share the, the link for this as well. Uh, it's, in fact, it's on the description if you're looking at this on YouTube. Uh, and in fact, I think on the Facebook description as well, I think it's there too. So we've done the, the thing that I showed you earlier. I've from machine imported UART and PIN. Uh, I've also imported time, um, or the sleep function of time, because we're going to be using that. And then something I discovered that I didn't know about, uh, there's a thing called U UOS, um, which gives you things like what version of Raspberry Pi firmware you're using, uh, what, the, what the device is called and so on. So that's quite a nice thing. So I'm going to use that further down in the code. Uh, then I'm going to set up my UART device, so ID 0, 
pin 0 and pin 1 for transmit and receive and the baud rate 9600 that we've looked at already. In fact, this is where I screenshotted that from. And then we've just set our UART up by um, creating the ID um, as 0, which we've got there. The baud rate is 9600 TX and RX pins 0 and pin 1. And then I've created a little help command. So one of the things about Bluetooth devices, I mentioned before that they're very similar to modems. So back in the day, in the 90s, when you had to connect to the internet, some of you might remember that you had a little box connected to your phone line, and that was called a modem, a modulator demodulator. And modems, if you ever needed to um, figure out how they worked, they, sended, they sent at commands to the modem. So your computer would send an attention command, an at command, and it would say attention, and the device would say, okay, I'm ready to, to speak to you. And then it would say, right, I'm gonna set up, um, I'm gonna send some data, and then it would tell it what data, and it was all using these AT commands. Bluetooth devices still use those AT commands. So um, you can Google um, what these AT commands are, but just a few of them um, here. So AT plus version will give us the version of the device. Um, AT plus UART will tell us some information if we have the question mark at the end. So we're going to type these in a second and we're going to have a play with um, the Bluetooth device. And we can do things like set the Bluetooth module's name. So when you um, you load up your, your phone and you search for devices, you'll see it with the name that you choose. Um, I didn't know you could do this until I was messing about with um, these um, with Dabble and these uh, robots um, about a year or so ago. Okay, so what that's what we're going to do. We're going to set the name. We can set the, uh, the pin if we wanted to. It's probably not a good idea to set the pin if um, if the thing you're pairing it to doesn't know what that pin will be. Normally, it's like one, two, three, four, or zero, 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 zero. Okay, uh, further down we have um, a little command line. So, what if you can see on the bottom of the screen there? It says Pico term, and it's got a little arrow there. That's a little command line utility that this program is going to create. So this is a command I didn't know about until this week. So you learn something new every day. So if you say print and then say a little dash and you say times 50, it will print that character 50 times. So if I just scroll on here, that little underline there is just that one line. So dash times 50. How cool is that? Then we say print Pico term and then we print UOS dot name in brackets or you name and if I scroll let me see if I can find where that where that one actually is on here this is just the uh, uh, the command line um, output so you can see there it says um, sysname rp2 node name rp2 release 1.14.0 so when I flash this that was the most recent version of the, um, the Raspberry Pi Pico OS, firmware, whatever you want to call it, MicroPython. Uh, and you can see their machine is Raspberry Pi Pico with RP2040. So that's what that one command there will do. It just outputs um, all that information. And then I've said type print, uh, print type quit to exit or help for commands. And then I just set a little loop where we say command equals just an empty string. Uh, while true and command is not equal to quit. That's my little get out, um, stop this piece of code running. Uh, and then we say command equals input. An input is a way of getting text commands into um, the Raspberry Pi Pico. So from the terminal, from the REPL. So down here, if I, I'm actually connected to the Bluetooth module at the moment, if I type the word help, um, in fact, let's just run that code. Uh, do I need to quit it first? In fact, in fact, I need to plug it in. I've actually not plugged the device in yet. So if I plug that in, if I just go to this view for a second, you can see that device there is flashing. So that little on and off, on and off, is the Bluetooth device saying that it's not paired with anything currently. So if I was to pair it on my phone, it would go to a solid light and that would mean it's paired. But when it's not paired, that's when we can send these AT commands. That's that's the difference. Um, so we want to change the name of the device, set the baud rate or anything like that. That's how we would do it. We do it when it's when it's flashing, when it's not been paired. So that's the first thing we need to do. So I'm just going to run that code there just to see if we can get that to work. So there we go. Uh, if I just move this up so we can see what's going on. So OK. So Adam says the audio dropped well as I plugged in. 
yeah clearly there's something a bit a bit of a bug there but it's restored now no worries yeah i think there might be an earthing issue on these macbook pros when you plug things in the monitor sometimes you know flickers and it's because the um Apple don't bother earthing things. In the UK, we earth everything. So we have a three pin plug. We have like, you know, the live, we have the ground, but we also have this earth, which um, is not like a ground because ground can be negative voltage. It's no voltage. It's it's properly earthed into the earth. <laughs> so um, they don't bother with that. And therefore you get all this sort of noise and things. So that's probably to do with that. Okay, so what I was saying was, um, we're now running on this little command line, this little utility. So if I type the word AT, um, I get a little response back that says, okay. So that's me talking to the Bluetooth device. And if I say AT plus name, question mark, um, then we get uh, the name of the device, which is currently BT. So if I say AT name equals, now is some devices you do equals, sometimes you don't include the equals. So I'm gonna try it with the equals. And I'm just going to call this uh, Pico. And I think it's actually set that to equals Pico. So let's try that again without the equals, which looks odd, but works. There we go. You can see now it's set to Pico. So if I do at question mark, um, it, it says OK. And at plus name, question mark, the name of the device is Pico. So if I was to search for that on my phone, I would see there's a Bluetooth device that's called Pico. So I'm just going to go back to our um, our loop so that we can see what's going on as well in there. But we can see that that is actually working. Um, so what we first do is we say input and that's how we type commands in. Um, it's just a command line. Um, whatever you type in in the command line will appear in the in the string command uh, and it will it will get rid of the return at the end. So when you press enter and, and it's quite friendly because you can you can delete, you can go backwards and forwards, all that kind of stuff within that input command. Um, so then we say, uh, if the command equals help, we're on the help command and the help function up there just prints out all those different um, functions. If I just come down here and I just type help in lowercase, press enter, um, it prints out all those things I've just told it to. Um, if, so that's the help, um, otherwise or else if, so it either does that or it does this. If it's not quit, then we want it to do the um, the piece of code where it'll actually write to the UART device, the command that we've typed in. So when I type in AT, that's the bit that actually writes AT out to the Bluetooth device and, and it can then respond back. So uh, I, I echo the command by just doing print. I then wait for a um, hundredth of a second and then um, I get the response back in bytes. So I just say, first of all, I'm going to create a, 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 a variable called response. I'm going to feed into that something that's uh, bytes. And then this is the important part. And this is similar to on the Arduino where you say um, um, serial.available. So what we're doing here is we're checking to see in the UART device, is there anything in the buffer? Because if you remember when things get sent across the um, across the ether, um, across the wireless, <laughs> um, that Bluetooth device will start receiving bits and it'll start building up the bytes and it'll build quite a few bytes in its buffer. Um, and then once that buffer has got a, a, a reasonable amount of bytes in there, it'll say there is something in the buffer. So that's what this any does. It tells us there is something in the buffer. So if any is greater than zero, something's in the buffer, we can say response equals UART read line. So just grab everything that's in there stick it into the uh, the response variable um, and then we print out reading data uh, and then we say um, output and this little command here what this does um, it says so output which is our string becomes equal to an empty string dot join and then what we're joining together is the the command that we typed before so the at command and I've just wrapped it a string thing just to make sure that um, it's kind of safe to print out that string command will just change it from whatever it is if it was an integer into a string um, and then that double speech mark single speech mark means print a speech mark <laughs> then we say response uh, and then we say response dot decode utf8 utf8 is a um, a string format so it's just an international um, text format for 8-bit um, unsigned integers so ascii essentially american standard code for information interchange 
So what that whole command does is it just outputs um, in a nice way. If I just come back down here and I type AT. So what happens here is we get the command in the little speech marks. So that's what that speech marks there does. It echoes the command that we typed in, which is at that little speech marks. Then it puts the word response and then it puts the word OK, which is the response that we got back, which is in that response.decode. Now, the reason that I did this and I didn't just print it out is I wanted to know if there was any spaces or any kind of characters like that, because the print command um, put spaces in for us. It's really helpful. So if we have two variables um, with two bits of code, uh, let, let me demonstrate. If I just quit out of this, I just go into Python. Oh, we're in Python already. So if I say a equals hello, and uh, a equals hello and b equals world and then I say print a comma b it puts a space in between them now I didn't tell it hello space or space world um, the print command is helpful enough to put that space in but I didn't want it to do that I wanted to know whether there are any special commands any weird characters that it can't print but take up a space on screen uh, when I was getting stuff back so it's just to help troubleshoot so that's why that output command is as complicated looking as it is and then I print it out to the screen otherwise if I type in the word quit then again I print 50 dashes and I say bye so that's a little command line utility that I've written for um, for talking to my Bluetooth device before I pair it. So if I run this again, if I just go to run, uh, you can see there it says Pico term. And if I do AT again, we can see the Bluetooth device is saying OK. So let's try some other commands. Let's type help and see what we've got. So we've got AT plus pin. If I do a question mark, um, it's not giving me a response back for that one. Was there a password one? If it doesn't know what they are, it'll just not give you a response back. Now, not all devices have all the commands available. Um, I think that's pretty pretty much everything I wanted to do there. I just wanted to give it a name. Um, but if you just do AT in question mark, it'll just come back and tell you that it's OK, which is good because if, if it doesn't work or I've got the pins wrong way around, we won't get anything at all. So one of the things I was thinking about was I want to create like I've got um, one of these Smiles robots here, whether it's an Arduino, whether it's a Pico Smiles, which we've got over here, which is a Raspberry Pi Pico uh, on a Smiles robot. I want to attach a Bluetooth device to this and I want to make this a remote control robot. And the remote control I want to have as a 3D printed remote control that's completely self-contained, battery powered with a Bluetooth device. And I thought, what better than getting a Raspberry Pi Pico, because these things are like three, four pounds, very cheap, um, a Bluetooth module and some um, push button, um, momentary switch buttons. So what I've got, if I go to the overhead, I've created a little board there and it's just got a couple of you know, six push buttons there and I've just soldered them to this board here. You can see my dreadful soldering there. Um, I'm sure I could do a better job of that. In fact, one of the pins has, has come undone from the, uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico. However, uh, and it's also connected there. You can just see that's flashing away. So if I come back over here and I go to, let's try here. Um, no, in fact, let's go over here. If I go to Bluetooth, um, I think that's the one. No, uh, remote. There we go. So what I've done here, I wanted to show you this because um, these momentary switches, I, I had to learn how to get these to work. So I've got a couple of commands up, down, left, right, button A and button B, uh, and they correspond to um, up, down, left, right, button A and button B. And what I've then done is I've said, OK, so I'm going to solder these to my Raspberry Pi Pico. I'm going to solder them to the pins which are on the bottom left of the device as you sort of look at it and their pins um, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11 and 10. And then I've said these are inputs, they're a pin dot input and this is the bit I didn't know. So you have to say pin dot pull up uh, and there was a really good um, guide on YouTube. What was the guy's name? Drone something, Dronebot. 
and he did a really good explanation. He had two different types of push button uh, and the kind of push button that I've got require you have the pull-up resistor enabled within the chip. So the Raspberry Pi Pico, within that tiny little piece of silica there, uh, it has some resistors built in and you can, with software, enable or disable these. And what the pull-up resistor does is it says, right, I'm going to pull this up and uh, when you press that button and you short it out, um, you will then get that voltage across. We'll get that one, but by default, it's up. So we, we get a zero. Uh, without that, the pin, the button actually won't work. So by setting these to pin dot pull up, it means that we can use our push buttons and we can grab that and we can put that into our Bluetooth. So I can create a remote control just by putting some push buttons on some of the pins, reading them in just like that. So then what I do is I say remote control active. I print 50 of those dashes. Um, I set my command to nothing. And then I respond to bytes again. We then say you at um, dot any um, is greater than zero. If it is, then we want to read in um, to the response command and print that out. And then if the up uh, button is pushed, so the value is equal to zero, then we want it to print the word up and we want to write to the Bluetooth device the, the string up. And I've also included on there an N and an R. So slash N and slash R is new line and return. So it, again, why do we have things like new line and return and line feed? And this is all from back in the day before we even had um, monitors like we have now, like you're looking through now. We had um, teletype printers and teletype printers um, were very basic pieces of equipment. So they had a rotating um, drum that would feed the paper um, like a typewriter and they had a head and the head would go along and then so as you're typing things out it would go da -da 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 and type them out and then you have to say new line so it would rotate the drum and then return and it would go all the way back to the beginning. So those two commands new line and return are everywhere in IT in computing. So we have that in text files. So at the very end of a piece of text within a text file, there is um, an ASCII character that says um, new line and there's an ASCII character that says return. So these things are in there. Um, Unix still has them, Windows has them as well, that sometimes you have just one and not the other. Um, but when we're dealing with, um, with files and with serial communication, we still have to use this to signify that this is the end of the line um, and this is also return back to the beginning. So just one of those things. Um, <laughs> da -da 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 -da. Bing, <laughs> as Adam says. So yes, so what I'm doing there is I'm just saying up, new line return, just sleeping for a, a hundredth of a second. If down is pressed, print the word down to the terminal, write it to the serial port and so on and so on and so on. So we've got up, down, left, right, button A and button B. And at the very end, I just have another sleep if we don't do anything. So let's run this. I'm just going to stop that one from running and I'm going to run this one. Right, so it says remote control active. I'm going to go over to the, uh, the split view. So if I press one of these buttons, you can see there, it'll just keep doing button A or it'll do up or it'll do down or it'll do right or it'll do button B. So I've not got a debounce on this. So when I press the button, because the, the loop just keeps going round, it's not checking to see if that button had already been down and therefore it doesn't need to keep doing it. But this would work fine for a robot. So if I'd say, you know, go forward, go up, go down, go left, go right. My left one is the one that's uh, just become unsoldered. Uh, button B and button A could be stand up, sit down if it's a quad robot, or it could be um, make a sound or whatever we choose it to be. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to 3D print um, a little container to just um, put some nice buttons on there. So it uh, looks a bit like a Nintendo or a, a PlayStation, something like that. And um, this is just going to be encapsulated within the, uh, the 3D printed thing. So we can see there we've got the, um, the thing isn't actually connected to any device yet. So that's the other part. So let me just load up uh, myself again. So when I was creating this, this robot here, um, I'm not sure if that's still got enough power to actually display his face there. I created this. This is an Arduino um, and I have used the Dabble app, which looks like a little controller there. So Dabble is from Stempedia. It's a free piece of software and enables you to create um, 
Bluetooth uh, enable devices and take data from them. So I'm just going to see if I've actually got this one on there. And I can actually see on the one of the Bluetooth devices, if I can, there, can you see this one that's called Pico? I can get that angled just right. You just see one there, it's called Pico. That's the device that we've just programmed. So it actually has detected it. Um, I don't think this has got enough juice in it. It's not flashing at the moment. So it probably means the battery is flat on this one. Oh, I've just not plugged it in properly. Let's try that again. I can see that's got enough juice now. So I'm just gonna search for this. So Dabble um, enables us to do some really simple things um, such, there we go, got it. Such as if I press this button here, oh, that just gone off again. Let me try and just squeeze that in there and keep it there. I've not screwed that in, that's why it's, uh, it's coming undone. I just need to connect to that one more time. So what Dabble is doing, it's a library which uh, works for the Arduino. It doesn't work with MicroPython. I actually emailed them this week to say, um, you know, can you can you um, let me know if you're working on a MicroPython version of this? And they haven't got back to me. So as I'm pressing these buttons here, these left, right, you can see that this screen is sort of changing there. I don't know if that's any better on the, uh, the overhead. Is it just as flickery? Probably not. Um, so I'm able to, um, I'm able to program these buttons um, in the, the Dabble um, library uh, and you can just check for things like um, is left button pressed is right button pressed uh, and then in your code your robot code you can make your robot move forward and backwards so you can use the nice gamepad um, command to control your robot so I was wanting to do something like that for my remote that I've created there but I have to do the hard work what they've done in the um, the dabble app is they've created a a protocol a framework for receiving and sending data so there their app, their gamepad, when you press um, you know, the up button there, it will send a character or a stream of characters through the Bluetooth and then the library will pick that up and say, I understand what that means, that means left. And then it presents that um, to, the, to the object code. We don't have any of that, um, so we're gonna have to program our own. So I'm just gonna send simple commands, text commands like up, down, left and right. Um, and then I'm just gonna read them in. So on my actual Pico robot, it will have to be listening to the, um, the Bluetooth device and it will need to um, respond accordingly when we send it an up, down, left, right command, which is backwards, forwards, left and right. Um, what else was I going to say about that, um, about pairing and so on? So there is some commands as well to pair the devices. And that was in, if we go back to um, here for a second and I go back to the other input test. Uh, to the help command. Uh, duh, 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 duh. Have I got them? There is another command which is called something like C mode, and you can either have master, slave, or third ver the third version. And it's to do with when the device first loads up, does it automatically pair with the last thing that it was paired with, or do you need to? Um, so are you the slave as in you're listening for things to pair with you and then you just accept or are you the master where you're looking for devices to pair with so that's to do with c mode so i haven't included any code to do with that uh, but i will update the, the library as i go because i'm going to fully flesh this out so hopefully um i'm not leaving you uh, with half the information there there is a bit more that we need to do um so okay so let me just uh, break out to some of the comments we've got here so John B video, we had a typewriter and then a Commodore 64. Yes, um, I have, um, I had a, a, a ZX Spectrum. I've still got it somewhere. I, I, I look for it the other day and I can't find it. And then you can see there, I've got, um, there's a BBC uh, computer just there, which belongs to my auntie, which is very kindly uh, given me. And um, we didn't have the ZX81, but they did have them at school. Um, we did work on BBCs as well. But yeah, the Spectrum was the computer I had in the 80s. I learned to do like print poo, 20 go to 10, <laughs> that kind of stuff. Uh, so Jerry, I'm saying um, we can create um, your app in MIT Inventor website. It was pretty easy. Cool. I've not looked at that. I shall have a, an investigate of that. So there are quite a few different frameworks uh, out there. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. It probably is just a matter of finding one that's been designed for uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico or just MicroPython and then letting, uh, letting that do the heavy lifting. So one of the comments at the very beginning uh, of the show, just before I went live, um, was about how do you 
how would you send an object, like a Python object, across um, from one device to another? And that's called serialization. So when you create um, an object in memory, uh, what that object is actually doing is just storing some variables um, and it knows what sequence they should be. And when you serialize something, it just takes those um, variables in that sequence of bytes and then writes them out to something. So you could write them out to a string, you could write them out to a file, to a serial. And then on the other end, you would have to have the exact same class that knows exactly how to deserialize them and put them back into memory. So that serialization, deserialization stuff um, over Bluetooth can be a bit dodgy because Bluetooth is not 100% reliable. You can get breaks, uh, you can get noise and things like that. So you probably need some kind of library that will introduce some error correction. So every byte that you write, it needs to just check that that byte got there. So in the internet, we have things like UDP and TCP, which is this transmission control protocol or the unsigned datagram packet, which is just like a, a postcard. You, do, you don't really care if it gets there or not, you've just sent it, which is fine for kind of real time stuff. Whereas TCP is kind of like recorded delivery. So you definitely know that that packet has got where it needs to go because you've got uh, an acknowledgement back. But that means there's a lot more control stuff that needs to happen there. So with Bluetooth, we need something that can sit either side of our Bluetooth devices and just check that the data that we're sending and receiving is good. So somebody will have already done that. Let's not reinvent the wheel with that. Okay, so is there anything else I wanted to cover off then? So Adam was talking about um, before the quad robot. So I've just got one here. Uh, and you were saying about what's the difference between the foot and the foot M. So the foot M is a mirror foot. And the difference is it's to do with which side the servo horn is on. So if you look, these are exact mirrors. Um, if that wasn't a mirror, that servo horn would be on that side. So it'd be exactly the same side like so, but it's not, it's the mirror image of that. And it's the same with these motor holder boards as well. So they also have um, a mirror image version and that's to do with which orientation the servo horn presents itself at the top there. So you need to have two of each uh, to get that to work. So just thought I'd follow up on that one. And the other thing I was looking at this week, I ordered um, an M5 stack, which is uh, an ESP32 uh, inside a really nice case with a battery, with a display, with a speaker, um, and some nice ports and things. And uh, they're pretty cool devices. I know Adam's a big fan there. I can see your uh, profile picture is actually an M5 stack as well. So yes, um, I'm interested to know what we could do with that because M5 stacks, if it's running uh, ESP32, it can run MicroPython. So I'm all in with MicroPython. The only thing I am a bit, you know, um, questioning is do I want all those things connected all the time? What I like about the Raspberry Pi Pico is it's just that chip. So it's nice and thin. Um, it's not got lots of extra bits and bobs on it that I might not use. Um, it is just a nice simple thing. So that's, um, <laughs> Adams is one of the closest things to a UK rep. Yeah, we're interested. Are they a Chinese company? Um, they're sort of Shenzhen based, I believe. I uh, had a quick look on the, the YouTube channel and they've got some, um, They've got some videos on there. <laughs> That's not what I will say about that. So yeah, it's, it's a nice device. Um, build quality is good. And um, I really like the interface, the UI flow stuff. So programming it is quite straightforward. So yes, Shenzhen. Awesome, okay, so hopefully um, the issues I had with audio at the beginning of this video uh, didn't cause too much trouble. I'm gonna slice that off. So uh, <laughs> hopefully when we started again, it was okay. Um, but I hate when things go wrong like that. I might get an echo at the moment. I can see both my microphones are working at the moment. So, well, I wasn't echoing there, was I? Okay, so hopefully that's all good. So Adam says he's working on docs for M5 stack as well. Um, for, yeah, based in Smiles. I saw the, the banner that you did. That looks pretty cool. And uh, the last little facts I'll give you about Bluetooth as well. I was just showing you at the very beginning of the video. Do you know what the symbol is? The little Bluetooth symbol. It's actually a combination of two letters. So the H and the B. Harold, um, who is the, the Danish king, Danish Bluetooth king. So Harold Bluetooth is the, uh, the two symbols added together from the Bluetooth symbol. They're sort of runic alphabets. So just a little tidbit fact for you there. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, midweek video and I didn't ruin it too much with my sound issues.
never install an update before a show is the answer there. Um, so hopefully um, that wasn't too much of a disruption. Uh, what I will do though, I will just let you know that I do go live every single Sunday, seven o'clock GMT or British summer time, whichever we're in currently. Uh, though that doesn't help you if you're watching back um, this on YouTube, but then you don't care what time zone it is. You're watching it when you're watching it. Uh, if you check out smilesfan.com, you'll find the Smiles learning platform there. So I've got uh, a couple of courses, one how to build a Smiles quad robot. One is how to build a regular Smiles robot. There's also one on Python and there's also an introduction to robotics as well. Nice gentle introduction for everyone. Um, and also, if you want to help support the show, um, you can go to buymeacoffee.com um, slash Kevin McAleer and you can help um, buy me a coffee and help pay for the show. And that just supports the channel, keeps it going for a little bit longer and um, keeps me and my little pets in, uh, in food for another week. So um, I'll show you my pets. Uh, I have two chihuahuas. Uh, Archie and Minnie. I've got two uh, geckos, Rick and Morty, and I've got a whole array of cats. So we have uh, Trixie, who's the black and white tuxedo. We have, um, I think that one is um, uh, Bella, which is our latest little kitten. Then we have Salem, who's a, just a massive puma of a cat. And then we have the feral cat, which is Cookie, uh, who never comes inside the house unless it's like really, really cold. She just likes to spend all day outside. So... <laughs> They're my pets. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, I don't know why I had that as a as a an overlay, but but there you go. <laughs> I did. Okay, that's everything I wanted to cover off. Um, I shall see you on Sunday then. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you soon. Thanks everyone.